All right, so we're gonna talk about some streamers now. Um, now, I'm gonna be talking about trout streamers and everything, but um, I'm talking about the hooks for them. But but streamers, man, like it's a big broad term for any, any kind of fly that is streaming through the water, being like stripped through the water. <laughs> Or, um, or you cast it, and you let the tide, you, the, the current take it, and then you strip it in, and you make it look like a little fish or a little minnow. Now, um, let's see, this is one that's tied on a salmon fly hook. It's got like, it's a black hook with that like upturned eye. Makes it look real pretty. Um, do I tie a lot of these? No, no, no. But I do happen to have the hooks. Um, and so I do, I do tie some of them. Does a salmon fly? Does a salmon fly have to be tied on a salmon fly hook? No, they don't. No, no, they don't know the difference. Um, just us as humans, we, <laughs> we we care about that stuff, but not necessarily them. So again, there you go. You gotta. There we go. We got a salmon fly hook streamer. Now, what you'll notice about streamer hooks is that they tend to be thicker, thicker wire, because they're definitely sinking. All right, they're gonna be dropped down into the current, into the whatever, and stripped on through, and they're gonna be subsurface. Um, and um, and a longer, a long shank. All right, so that long shank allows us to kind of tie a lot of a body on it. We could cut it off right, right there, or we could let the materials go further beyond that. Um, so, so you tend to see that in a lot of these. So, like a nymph hook nymph hook since we're tying and we're using that whole shank to tie the, the, the little nymph it doesn't really need to go beyond that and it's imitating something very small in the stream since we're kind of imitating minnows or, or a leech or something kind of skirting through the water um, the, then we we now step it up to a longer shank okay so so could you tie streamers on nymph hooks yeah could you tie them on drag flies dry fly hooks yeah but the, it's it, really really you know <laughs> we're going with um so this is again a box of streamer hooks i got them assorted from let's see size what's that label say size oh boy well that's probably like a size six or so size six remember the smaller the size now look at that that's probably like 3x long. Look at that, that's a very long shank. Yeah, I think these are, are divided in 1x long, 2x long, and 3x long hooks as we go down down there. Um, again, a streamer hook is a streamer hook. Don't go crazy like worrying about matching the exact type. Okay, we just want a long shanked hook. A long, a long shanked hook in relationship to the, the hook gap. Um, let's see, size sixes, eights, sixes maybe that's a four up through about 12 I don't have anything smaller than a size 12 so where with nymph hooks and dry flies where you might tie some pretty small nymphs you're not gonna tie any small streamers okay so this is gonna be at the larger end of things they're gonna be things that might be an inch long. they might be two inches long and in salt water they could be you know very long six inches or so um, or, or beyond now this is my favorite little box. My favorite little box. Now, why is it? It's because it's filled with my favorite patterns. That's two patterns that worked well for me. It, it, and so, and these are ones that, that I discovered on my own that worked well for me. I happen to like tying them, and I happen to like tying them, and so I tied different varieties of them. Now, one of them, so this is, this is my all-time favorite, and it's, it's called the Hornberg. Um, so the Hornberg is, is, it's got basically four materials, okay? It's got black thread. That's not that much of a material, but it is. It's got a gold tinsel body, a gold tinsel body. It's got calves hair, and then it tends to have some sort of feather on top. Now, this one's tied with wood duck. It's got that little, little tiny, that brown and white, brown, white, brown, white wood duck feather. Um, and this is meant to look like a little something streaming through the water. It's got that bright yellow to attract something, uh, to attract a fish. 
Now, <clears throat> traditionally, that fly is has two versions of it that are tied as one is kind of like a dry fly that floats on top of the water, which has a different type of hackle. It stands out, it spikes out, and sits on top of the water. And then there's a wet fly version, which which, which has like a softer hackle. Now, uh, um, I so so actually here, this is kind of like the wet fly version. Okay, you see how it's got this hackle tied up front and the wood duck. So it's got like a, a fifth little one, and it's got a little bit of tinsel in there, a little bit of crystal flash. I don't know if you can see that yellow. Yeah, there's that yellow sparkle. Um, just a couple strands, just a couple strands add a little bit of sparkle. So it's again gold wire, uh, gold, <coughs> gold um, mylar um, tinsel as the body. Then you tie on some calves tail, some calves tail dyed yellow, and then some wood duck. Okay, this or this one's mallard. Okay, this one's mallard. Again, more like the traditional wet fly, and then some then some grizzly hackle. Um, Grizzly is the term for that black and white, black and white uh, patterned hackle uh, feather. And that's a, just a couple wraps is all it takes. And this is a wet fly, streaming through it. So then I have ones that have that don't have any hackle on them. Okay, hackle, no hackle, hackle, no hackle. So some of these look pretty bushy and buggy, and some of them look more streamlined, tied as a streamer. Okay, um, yeah, that's one where like. I, it, we you develop in fly fishing and in fly tying you develop a set of confidence flies flies that i mean you, you can have hundreds of different flies that you scroll through and you tie on and you snip them off you tie on another one you snip them you tie on another one different types of patterns different types of sizes and honestly the, one of the ways that you get really good at fishing is by sticking with the same fly learning different ways to retrieve it and different ways to present it higher lower in the water column and faster or slower and, and you learn how to make it look alive um, and those confidence patterns are the patterns that you end up catching fish on because you fish them better than anything else so the hornbird is one of my confidence patterns nobody talks about the hornbird it just happened to be that as I was learning how to fly tie and I flipped through this book it's probably a page that's falling out um, let's see is the pattern in here pattern 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 come on oh man it's so fun to like look through these yeah oh my god it's not even in the streamer section it's not even in the streamer section the Mickey Finn is Mickey Finn is one of my other favorite ones to use I just like that name Mickey Finn um, where do they have the hornbird in here sorry sorry they have it under traditional wet flies and there's, there's the hornbird tied that way, all right, and that hornbird pattern. Now again, this is an old book. It's got some parts that are in black and white, some that are in, in color, but this is, I learned how to tie by looking at these pictures and trying to imitate them. And then not always having the same materials that were in that book, and I'd have to substitute and find some other material. But the hornbird was one of the ones where I had every single material that was listed. And because I had every single material, something that I felt ah I made it right and so I fished it more often knowing that like I put the right materials on there that it called for and 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 it became my confidence fly I never really thought about it till now but because I had the I had the I, it was finally one where I had the right materials and I could fulfill the whole recipe of the fly where so many of these old school patterns I had the substitute because I didn't have beaver I didn't have mallard or I didn't have you know um, you know a particular type of pheasant you know feather or, or, or jungle cock or something like that and, and I thought like ah oh, you know I'm just gonna try my best and, and so yeah so that one that one and the Mickey Finn also the Mickey Finn is just man, talk about simple materials same gold rib you know the gold ribbing on the on the show hook shank that a little bit of flash and it's got three layers, a little bit of, of <clears throat> now this is, um, this is either tied with, with uh, deer hair, uh, you know, bucktail, or with calf's tail. Um, calf's tail's gonna be a little curly and stuff. Looking at how straight these fibers are, this must be um, some deer hair. So a little bit of deer yellow, and then, and then tied on after that is a little bit of red. Tied on a little bit of yellow, 
this and stream through the water. It's got a little bit of movement and everything. Um, that's that's one of my confidence patterns. It's just bright. It's a tractor pattern. Um, when you, typically, when you're when you're tossing in a streamer, you're tossing in some sort of a tractor pattern. So now, there, there's a few there's a few flies in here that that Ted Colossal um, gave to me. more of the ones that he tied me. But this was one of his patterns. Now, now it's got a little bit of peacock on top. It's a yellow cast and there's a red cast tail, tail as a throat and, the, and that gold. You see the same color combinations? There's a million little color combinations, but what made this one special was that Ted was a friend who worked with my father at UNC, United Nuclear Corporation, building nuclear reactors for the submarines. And and my dad, uh, let's see, I think, I think, yeah, Ted might have connected my parents together. I think so, because my mom taught, like, Ted's kids, and in school, and, like, ended up being like, hey, I know this guy, he's a nice guy, and, it, like, I think it was Ted's son that might have connected my parents together. Anyway, anyway, my dad would visit Ted in his, like, you know, in his retired years had these blueberry plants outside we go every year and that like July time when the blueberry harvest was in and Ted was one of the nice people who who knew that I like this fly tying he liked the fly tying he'd take me over and we'd do like a little lesson and and he'd give me materials and he'd give me flies and, and this type of fly this is this fly is in like memorial to him nobody's ever gonna like find this in a book this is his own creation um, and it, you know, did somebody else create it out there? Maybe, but but Ted gave me this fly, and I made a few others so that you know when I lost his flies, um, yeah. And I noticed that Ted tied his on uh, one with a hook eye, where the hook eye was straight, and he gave me some of those some of those hooks to keep tying them on, and they work well as a confidence pattern, as a, as a tractor pattern, fishing for um, fishing for. You know, I you know I take Ted's fly and I add some 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 marabou on there instead of calf's tail, and it gives it a different look in it. It's now that's no longer Ted's fly anymore. Now it's a little different. Now this is kind of my fly, my version of it. Um, Ted used to also kind of like paint like little eyes on there, paint use like you know, nail polish and stuff and paint little eyes on there. So I keep those. Those are special to me because they're a memory of one of the first people who, when I was a teenager, you know, helped me high flies and I have some other stuff um, some materials that he gave me that, um, yeah so other things let's see other streamers this is all about streamers so um, what else we got oh, my dad's friend my dad used to work so so in the in the 90s he got laid off uh, from UNC the, they weren't making as many reactors it was after um, it was during the recession in the, in the 90s um, and a lot of people were getting laid off and, and my dad worked um, eventually after, I think a couple years of unemployment, eventually got hired uh, as a road, uh, not, a, not a foreman, but um, a road worker, um, working to repair, repair potholes, kick up dead animals, and, and build roads and pave them and stuff like that, and put in new signage and stuff like that. So he worked for the public works department of uh, Spray. He worked with was uh, his name was Lenny. I forget Lenny's last name. Um, Lenny and uh, Lenny and his wife um, they adopted a child. I think I think from China. Um, yeah, I remember their family growing in that way. Um, after after Dad died, I really didn't I didn't know how to get in contact with Lenny. Didn't really know where he lived, even though I'd been to his house and driven there a couple times. I know kind of where it is, but not enough to like pop on by and be like, hey, Lenny. Lenny was another one of those people who pulled me aside and taught me how to tie flies. And, he, and one of his early patterns was this little leech pattern. And I remember him saying, hey, just a little bit, just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit of marabou. And this is a two material fly. You have a thread either, so if I'm using brown marabou, um, 
that brown feather, then I'm gonna have brown thread. So I'm doing black marabou or olive marabou. So those three colors. I think, I wanna say the first one he tied for me was either brown or olive. And he just taught me how to tie on a little bit and to pinch it with your fingers to kind of create an end and then tie on another little bit. And pinch it so it was the same length. And tie on another one, pinch it. Uh, so not using your scissors, but by pinching, you end up getting these rough little edges instead of a sharp edge where the scissors, you get these rough little edges and it kind of looks a little more natural. And this, going through the water in a little pond, in a trout pond, um, looks like a little, a little leech swimming in that slow, still water. Um, and he even taught me the hand to retrieve for it, the idea of taking the line and as you're curling the line back and forth, tiny, slow, retrieves, not jerks, not, not pulling in the line, but had your rod in this hand, and this hand was your line hand, kind of like wrapping and making little coils in your hand, little coils in your hand, coiling that line up so that you could then cast it out and let go of those coils. Um, but that hand retrieve, that slow hand retrieve, served me so well with those leeches and with many other slow retrieve streamers, maybe like a woolly bugger, which I don't have those. I mean, I, I think that's in my in my bass collection. Um, for but uh, muddler minnow, muddler minnow is another one. So this is one where it's got like a deer body spun hair. This is one of my favorites. So um, this one's got a little bit of calf's tail on it, a little bit of marabou to puff through the water, and it's got this deer spun deer hair on it um, that makes it push a lot of water. So this could this could be fished down low, and it could look like a little sculpin. You know, uh, a fish like, you know, scoping through the water, or it could be fished up high, make a big disturbance on the, almost, not quite like a popper, but, um, you know, like a glider through the surface of the water, pushing a lot. Um, let's see, so this is a two-sided box. The one with the white on top, these are weighted muddlers. They have a, 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 you know, like a lead core inside them for them to sink, and the ones where the white is not up top, these are the unweighted ones. So white is weighted on so even though this has weight, uh, white on it, it's not up at the top of the box as, it, as you open it up. Um, yeah, and the, I guess one other thing is like, as I'm matching some of these flies, I'm looking at the color of the bottom. When do I use like a brown leech? Well, when the bottom of the pond is, is brown, you know? Same thing with this, you know, if I'm fishing like a stream and I look at it and go, oh, it's kind of got like some green covered rocks and so I'm gonna use like a greeny olive one. Um, so, so these are some streamers that are streaming through the water. And they're a little different because you know it's like, it looks like a leech as it's streaming through the water. Or, but these are attractor patterns. These other ones. Um, and then I've, I've got a whole thing of woolly buggers, which is another again tied on streamer hooks. This is all about streamers. Um, and I don't really have a box of salmon flies because there's no point in tying those fancy looking salmon flies um, because they'll they'll even eat these these. These flies here, eh, you know, um, if, if you know, if you're really fishing for salmon and stuff like that, you don't need to make fancy salmon flies. Um, they'll still go after after these types of streamers. Um, yeah, yeah. So a couple little stories there. You had the, you had, you know, little stories of my confidence flies, stories of a few people who taught me how to tie flies when I was young, um, really in those early years who would be like, oh, like I see you doing this, and they might give me a little little, uh, little tips and tricks on how to you know, manipulate the thread or how to hold the materials. Um, you know, and then of course you take that like it's, like it's your Bible, like it's, you know, it's, it's the word of, of somebody super important because they know what they're talking about. Um, and now in the world of YouTube and everything, uh, all the information's out there. You can find as many different ways of tying things as you want. But, yeah, that goes over the streamer hooks. Um, okay. I think, I think maybe, maybe we'll do a video diving into the vest and just kind of show an organization of that.